All right, well, seeing as how I've already taken an edible, I suppose I should probably go ahead and do this uh, commentary thing before I can't speak anymore. So for this first match, we're having a wonderful Ran uh, Mercedes. And who's the last one? Rimuru. So basically what I went into this with is I went with uh, Sinful Angelica, Destina, and Zahak. Now, the reason why I went in like this is because straight up, like, hey, yo, RNL's going to happen. Uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't happen throughout the entire fight. And also, I fought this entirely way too safe. For example, the uh, cleanse on the Zahak there, completely unnecessary and didn't even need to do that. Absolutely no point to even doing that at all. But, okay, whatever. It still works out. We kill Mercedes and then we have, you know, you know the immortality on the Sinji, so we don't have to worry about her coming back. And then Sinji is the target of the Rimuru. That's not going to kill. But now we have to go into two immor like two turns of immortality on both Ran and on Rimuru. Now, like I said before, this um, Ran is not running uh, RNL, so we don't really have to worry about that. I mean, I think I'm st in my mind, I'm still thinking it could happen. But, A, we'll deal with it whenever we deal with it. So we have Destina here just in case we have to use a revive at any point because... If we don't play this right at any time, Sinful Angelica can go down. So here we have our opportunity so we can kill Ran, because we killed enough turns, and he didn't get his opportunity to really go into the rest of the team. And then I use this extra turn to go into Rimuru. So now as soon as he's off of his immortality, I can just go into him, and then we're good to go. And I use this chance to give myself an extra heal with Destina over onto Sinji. This does not kill her. Super awesome. And now I'm just flexing. <laughs> So, there's that first team. So, for the next team, now you know how I said like I'm playing this entirely too safe? I'm definitely still playing this entirely too safe. Because this is a top 100 guild. They have a plaque, so that means they must be good, right? So, like, that's what's going through my head. So, I went into this with uh, Armin, Dark Corvus, and uh, Rowana. When I really have no reason to actually bring um, Armin. Now, this is going into Unbound Knight, Arrowell, uh, Spirit Iseline, and um, Savior Aiden. Now, the reason why I say it's not necessary to bring um, Armin... Now, you can still get some value out of Armin here. The reason why I say that is because my Dark Corvus is on Proof of Valor. Now, with him on Proof of Valor, he just straight up has a 30% damage mitigation on being hit. Now, Armin reduces damage from a single hit perspective on other units in your party by 20%. Now, Proof of Valor and Armin's damage mitigation do not stack. And because of that, like, you're kind of like wasting Armin here. It's because if I really, really wanted to be a fucker about this, I could have brought, like, Yulha, for example. And Yulha would have just taken the extra damage because I also have Aureus on her. And then, you know, like, the more damage that you accrue on Yulha, the more opportunities you'll get so that you can use her S3. But, eh, I didn't do that. And it, this all still works out. Because, like, the plan in general is still to kill with Dark Corvus. Here, it didn't quite work out in the way that I wanted to. I could have gone into, like, anyone else if I wanted to. But, hey, whatever. Like, I killed uh, Savior Aiden with Armin. So I'm basically just kind of, like, wasting a turn. But, hey, it's fine. We're going into three Light Baits. And because you're going into three Light Baits, your Dark Corvus is going to build up Devil's Descent so fucking fast, it's not even funny. Now, <clears throat> one thing I guess I'll talk about right now, because basically you guys get the gist of this, Dark Corvus is going to basically DPS solo this entire fight. But one thing I'll probably say right now, on Spirit Iseline in general, because she's going to be buffed in like the next like little bit, whenever the next big balance change comes around, and all they're really doing with it is just, oh hey cool, whenever I have like the Awakening or the Possession buff, Oh, I actually fucking work now. Oh, yay! It only took forever, and the character works now. But what that also ultimately means is she's going to be doing a lot more damage because she's going to be doing her enhanced S1 a lot more. She's be doing she's going to be doing this. So the other thing as well with the buffs on Spirit Iseline are they also made it so that she recovers more HP on hit. So. Like, I, I love whenever SG does buffs like this, because whenever they do buffs like that, they just straight up say, like, oh, hey, uh, lol, it's going to get better. <laughs> and then I'm just like, well, how much better? How, how much better is this going to be? And then it's like, oh, uh, no. Well, can, can I see the numbers, guys? No. No, you can't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I guess we'll just wait until it comes out, and then we'll play with it. 
But yeah, that's like the, the gist of like what Spirit Isolene's getting. And the same kind of shit's happening to like other units like Arunka and like just and and LQC. LQC's buff's probably the fucking funniest because it's just like okay, cool. So what's LQC's problem? She's like the anti-dark unit, but like she just doesn't even have like the survivability because this is a unit that needs to have like go as slow as possible because you need every fucking stat you can imagine you need a lot of bulk you need attack you need crit you need crit damage you need fucking everything so that's why a lot of people run um the the slow turn build up um like four star artifact on her i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head it's the one that looks like a chainsaw but <clears throat> like <laughs> if you don't go then you just you're kind of fucked <laughs> so so what do they do to buff her Oh, uh, lol, I just do more damage on dark units. It's like, oh, okay, cool, can I see those numbers? No. <laughs> Alright then, let's, let's move on. And so, yeah, that's basically, like, some of the changes that we're getting. Like, I really don't give a flying fuck about a lot of the changes that we're getting. Because, like, just, they're just, like, they're, they're test builds, basically. We, we don't have enough info to really know, like, how effective they're gonna be. But either way, that was that match. So, here's the next one. Where we're going into a Holiday Euphine. Very, very rare. You see those on defense. Like, high respect to this guild. I don't think I fight Conqueror Lilius once in the entire, like, guild war. Which is amazing, actually. But yeah, Holiday Euphine, Lone Crescent Bologna, and LQC. So, like, LQC, you would think is like, oh yeah, this is mad scary, right? She really doesn't do as much damage as you would think if she's not going into a dark unit. So, that was like the big like kind of weakness here so i went in with adventurer raz destina and sylvan sage vivian so i went in with vivian because i just needed something to tank the lone crescent bologna because if you don't have anything to just kind of mitigate a lone crescent bologna or because i if she's on defense you have to immediately assume that she's going to be very very thick she's either going to be thick with hp defense effect resist who fucking knows because like, that's just how it, you would have to assume it to be on defense. Because if they're squishy on defense, they're useless. So, the Holiday Euphine was meant to go first, do some push-up, and then it just pushes up the whole team and they just do big damage. So, yeah, I can understand that. That makes a lot of sense. But, um, yeah, we'll go in and we'll deal, we'll deal with the uh, Holiday Euphine now. And now all we have left is Lone Crescent Bologna. So, the sooner we get rid of her, the better, because all she's going to do is keep going into Sylvan Sage. Now, I was a little bit worried that I was going to start running out of um, focus, because we're going into Sylvan Sage and just the whole team in general a lot, and I was debating if I should AoE or not, because I don't really want to push up Little Queen Charlotte if by uh, hitting her. So... I just decided, yeah, I'll just keep going into her. I'll keep my souls ready. Because, you know, the cool thing about Raz is whenever you have your S2 available and you have souls, hey, that's just free dual attacks. Man, who else can do that? Oh, yeah, Conqueror Lilius and Lilius and Cerise and all this other dumb forced dual attack shit. But, hey, the cool thing about Raz is, is he can possibly do a death break. So that's what makes him super cool. And... Yeah, straight up, that little Queen Charlotte doesn't have attack buff, so I'm not really afraid of any of the damage that she's going to deal. So yeah, now that I've dealt with the Lone Crescent Bologna, I can just straight up like throw away this uh, this S3 big heal on Destina, because I'm not going to be doing any reviving, I'm just trying to keep myself alive. And now I just go into her. Yeah, that's pretty much this fight. But like I said, like I was talking about earlier with the, little, the LQC buffs, um... So what's the big thing that she's going to be getting? Oh, I just, lol, I just do more damage on dark units, but I'm not going to tell you by how much. <laughs> so, like, just no example. And uh, here it was just a very, very clear example of, like, me going into this with a cleave. So this is Shu, Alencia, and Designer Lilibeth. So I decided to go in with Strays, Ahmed, and uh, Last Rider Crow. Now, I knew my Ahmed was going to go first. There's no, like, crazy fast units on that team. They were all kind of fast, but they're not going to beat, like, anything that you're going to speed contest with. So I bring Ahmed. I boost up and give attack buff to Strays. Kill the Alencia in one hit. And then I also go in with uh, Last Rider Crow because he got boosted up from Ahmed as well, because Ahmed is a completely fair and legitimately balanced character. And then we just uh, go in with an AoE. They're all fairly low on HP, but then we also have to deal with crit resist. So here's where the crit resist comes in. And those were two AoE attacks that just went into Last Rider Crow, so lots of cooldowns on that front. And then we just... We don't need to burn this, but, like, we just go into it anyway, just for the sake of it. And that gets rid of the crit resist. And, hey, LOL, dual attack. We win! Woo! 
But either way, that was like the still general gist of it. It would have worked out. <clears throat> and for the uh, final match here, I have Lone Crest, I have uh, Last Rider Crow, Zio, and uh, Rowana. Now I'm going into a Zahak, a, Mi a uh, Mercedes, and a Icarina. Now this was the team that I was actually the most scared to go into because I didn't really have a really, really effective blue tank for uh, Zahak to go into. So I was like, well, if I don't have a really good blue tank that I want to use to go into this, I guess I'll just speed contest it with Zeo and hope I don't get 15 percented. Now, to those of you who were paying attention, that Zahak was actually at 200 and fucking 80 speed. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so yeah, that boy would be zooming. And yeah, I had a little bit of information from my guild. They said like, hey, yo, that Zahawk is fast as shit. And it makes perfect sense when you look at it. Because if you ever see a Zahawk on defense, uh, unless you are very confident in your speed contesting abilities, you probably shouldn't try to like just go into it with a 200 or a 220 or something. Uh, it's probably some ridiculous plus 250 shit. Like, I'm just just gonna go ahead and tell you, because a lot of people, whenever they put Zahawk on defense, they want him to go first, because his S2 could hit any other unit, that's a, that's like a CR boost, it's also attack buff, you know, like, all that kind of stuff. So you never really want to just, like, passively go into a Zahawk, especially because his S3 injures as well. So... I mean, one thing you could do is you could go in there with uh, Yulha's Artifact, because that gives you a barrier at the start of the fight, and then you could tank a little bit of that damage with a blue tank of some kind. But, like, I just didn't want to do that. So, yeah, just speed contest. And then for the uh, final match here, we have Ahmed and Savior Aiden and Briar Witches area. Now, at first glance, it really does kind of look like... Okay, so maybe the Briar Witch is fast, and then they're going to try and go for a death break, and then just like a kill on any of the units. Now, that doesn't happen. So this Briar Witch is a little bit slow. Maybe they could be pumping in effectiveness. Maybe they were actually going full damage. It didn't really feel that hard to me. It didn't feel super, super damaging. But either way, even if um, the speed contesting that you're, you're like the speed tuning you're thinking doesn't really work out, Briar Witch is still like a massive threat in and of herself. Just because, lol, I just exist, you can't revive now. And I mean, that's pretty damn detrimental. So that's why I'm going for her first. Because then if like anything should happen that's like just crazy or whatever, I can then just go ahead and revive my pillars. But, like, it's not really a matter of I need to revive my Pillis, because I have my my three stacks of uh, will already, I have death buff, and I don't... I mean, yeah, I'm going to be dealing with attack buff Aiden throughout pretty much the rest of it, but I've already taken that one hit from a attack buffed Aiden already. So, from this point on, I'm actually not afraid of anything that she's going to be hitting me with. So... Yeah, everything is actually like completely under control at this point because Christie's there to give the extra effect resist and just so Deathbreak never happens. And that's also the one of the reasons why I'm withholding my S3 for so long on Pillis. Uh, two reasons. One, to make sure I have it because whenever I'm ready to go into Aiden, then I can soul burn that, go into her, and then go into her again and kill her. And two, if I were to be hit by any, like, really unpleasant debuffs of any kind, like a Death Break or something, I can at least get rid of one of my debuffs. Sure, you're dealing with Death Break and you're dealing with Unbuffable at the same time. But, I mean, I have a shitload of effect resist, so the chances of both hitting, eh, kind of low. But, like, hey, that's just the game that you play. And... I'm just choosing not to go into, like, Aiden, because I don't want to deal with um, the AoE attack. I don't want to deal with the five soul loss. And I'm also biding my time, waiting for this second skill null that Ahmed was going to do. So now that she's done her skill null right there, I am primed and I'm super ready to go on Pillis. I'm going to soul burn the S3, go into Aiden. Now, what this is also going to do is this is going to boost up my team. Like, watch the CR bar on the left. So yeah, they boost that up a little bit. That also includes uh, Pillis. Then the hit goes into Pillis. That's another little boost. And now I can go into her again. So this is with uh, defense buff as well. And this is just going to murder her. Thanks, Rocket Punch. You the best. And because of that, that's pretty much it, boys and girls. So let's go ahead and like look at some more of these uh, balance patches here. So yeah, I talked about Spirit Isolene. I talked about uh, Little Queen Charlotte, and then like uh, Jacko. She recently got some changes. Honestly, I'm just not a fan of Jacko in the slightest. Going to be some like combat readiness boosts, stuff like that. I just don't. 
really care in that in that respect. Like Jacko's not a character of mine. I don't really use her. It's like some form of control stuff. So I just nah, not even gonna read it. Don't really care. And then Summer Break Charlotte was definitely the uh, super winner of like all the patch stuff because basically she's just like, oh yeah, all that annoying shit about me where I have to like build up meter and all that other jazz and I have to wait for four fucking turns before I can do a dual attack. Oh yeah, that shit just all works at the start. And then like after that, then you can like build up again. And then there's also like a full cleanse on whenever you have, um, whenever you uh, use her S3, which is, ooh, that's, uh, that's some good shit. So, yeah, like, <laughs> Summer Break Charlotte definitely got some good stuff out of this. Little Queen Charlotte, eh, we don't really know yet. We actually have to test it to see if it's worth it. Uh, Sharoon, basically, hey, I, I, I decrease uh, buff durations by two turns now instead of just one. F yay. Do you heal? No. Oh, okay, cool. Bye. <laughs> And then, like, with Arunka, I think I talked about her as well. Like, Arunka, Arunka is this kind of one that this kind of irritates me. Because it's like, okay, so they took away the attack buff. So, yeah, no more attack buff. But, like, now, you, um, they're just saying, like, oh, lol, I just do more damage on barriered units. Okay, how much? Is it worth it? We don't know. We have to actually, like, test it. So we have no idea if this buff is going to even do anything. So if you have a means of giving yourself attack buff, I mean, maybe it's going to be crazy. Who fucking knows? I certainly don't. But, hey, that's just going to be entirely a matter of, hey, if it does good damage and it actually starts to kill barrier units, hey, fucking A, then we can use that. And then Assassin Cartuja, he just got completely reworked to pretty much give more evasion to the team. And he has, like, 50% now. Okay, cool. He's he's one of them them funsies units. Uh, Wings of Light and Shadow, it just straight up just works now on, like, every attack now. Uh, Sword of Winter Shadow, it's basically just uh, a book. And Iron Fan is one of those really cool ones where you do AoE attacks, uh, you get uh, CR boost. That sounds fun. But hey, I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, go ahead and please leave a like. If you want to see more of my stuff, hit subscribe. Hope to see you soon. Later.